Well, it's good to be with you again. Merry Christmas to you. And uh, I pray that God's blessing will be upon your life this week as you turn to the Lord and rem not just remembering, you know, the uh, wonders of Christmas, but, but thinking of the Savior who has been given, who has been born and who has come into the world, but to die for our sins. His name was Jesus uh, because he would uh, save his people from their sins. Uh, and this is the greatest news we could possibly have today is that Jesus Christ has come. The Father has fulfilled it. He's made it possible that we could know what it means to be forgiven of our sins by by the grace of God, of course, and the precious sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to challenge you today, and I, I'm hoping this will be a blessing to you. We're going to look at the uh, uh, fulfillment of promises and fulfillment of, of prophecies related to the Lord Jesus and uh, how the apostles saw it. Now, on the wonderful day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured out and fulfilled, I think, Joel chapter 2. And so that Holy Spirit was poured out there and, and uh, the witness, you know, began Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth as we think about the book of Acts and then even till our own day today. How did those uh, first believers, uh, what did they think? And so here... When uh, the miracles happened on the day of Pentecost, Peter, of course, is given the opportunity to explain it, to, to give the gospel application of what happened on the day of Pentecost. And that's what we're going to look at today. And I hope that this will be a blessing to you related to Christmas time as well. So let's take a moment and pray. Father, I just thank you so much for the privilege of opening your word and sharing it today. And I pray that your name will be glorified through this and that the uh, one, wondrous, wondrous gospel will be made known and made clear to those that are listening. And so I pray that hearts will be sensitive and open to your word and to the ministry of the Holy Spirit in their lives and uh, to looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Peter stands up uh, and raises his voice. And he says, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem. This is in Acts 2 um, and uh, verse 14. And Peter takes the position of, of leadership and explains what happened in those miracles there on the day of Pentecost. And in his sermon, and this is what I'm especially going to focus on, in his sermon, how he explained that there would be one to sit on the throne of David. And that was a fulfillment. And he, Peter, this is in Peter's mind, in the apostles' mind, the early believers' mind, that they knew this is why, this, this is a fulfillment of prophecy related to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it, Peter stood up to the 11 in verse 14 of Acts 2 and uh, raised his voice, and he said, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. So he goes in, he uh, delves into prophecy, and he goes back to the time of Joel. It shall come to pass in the last day, says God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men shall see visions. Your old men dream dreams. On my maid, men servants and my maid servants, I'll pour out my spirit in those days. They shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven, signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the coming of that great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's exactly what we see uh, in the fulfillment of this uh, uh, passage here. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, the man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst. 
as you yourselves know, him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God. You have taken by lawless hands of crucified, put him to death, um, and whom God raised up, and having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David says, now he goes into uh, pro prophecy here in verse uh, 25, and um, he out of Psalm uh, 16, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. He's at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart rejoiced, my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope, for you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. Men and brethren, let me speak freely. And this is actually where I want to be in the text. This is Acts 2, verse 29. Let me speak freely, he said, uh, to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He foreseeing this spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul would not be left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into heaven, but he says himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and and Christ. And then the people respond, what, what should we do? So uh, Peter went right to the heart of it. And the heart of it all was this Jesus. When we come to uh, Christmas time and we think about the birth of Jesus and all of the prophecies surrounding that. And then we, we think about at Easter time, Jesus' death and resurrection and all the prophecies surrounding that. And here on Pentecost, again, he's back to the point. It's all about Jesus. When we think about Christmas, we have in our culture and in our society, we have the, the, the Christmas tree, we have the giving of gifts, we have a kind of a music that kind of adorns everything and all of that is as wonderful as, as it is we cannot forget it's about this Jesus and the scriptures speak clearly of him who he is what he came to do and what he expects of us or what I don't know if that's the right way to say it what he came to do and the opportunity it is for us to know him to know God because of this Jesus. It's such a powerful uh, passage, I think. Uh, Let all the house of Israel know assuredly God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both the Lord and Christ. So we know that Jesus was born in order to be crucified. That's why in the, in the life of Jesus, he set his face like a flint to go to Jerusalem, even though it was going to be there in Jerusalem, that he would suffer and die. He went into Gethsemane, knowing that in Gethsemane, after the amens and the prayers are prayed, that he's going to be arrested and began to go through intense suffering. He knew that. He, that was the purpose for his coming. And when, when we think about this baby Jesus, and uh, all that surrounds the, the uh, Christmas time and the traditions that we have all surrounding that, but we cannot forget 
It's this Jesus that's been made the Lord and the Christ. We bow our heads to no other. It's at the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's at, it's at the name of this Jesus, the Son of God. God loved the world so much that he gave us his only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish. The most terrible disaster of all would be to perish, to be lost forever in hell. That would be the most terrible thing to happen. But you, it doesn't have to. You can turn to this Jesus, who is the Lord and Christ. He came for you. He came that you might be saved. He came that you might know him. He came that you might believe and follow him. It is this Jesus that all the house of Israel know. Now we, we know it was specifically in Acts 2. He's, he's making that message. Peter's making that message clear to the Jew, to the Jews, you know. Let all the house of Israel know. He said that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both the Lord and Christ. So we can't forget what he had to go through for us, not just for the Jews, but he died for the sins of the whole world. So it's not only for them, but we have to remember this Jesus was crucified, the most horrible death under the Romans. And because he, he was lied about, he was mocked and ridiculed, mistreated, he was beaten, he was uh, scourged and whipped almost to death and nailed to a cross until he gave up his spirit and then his body was taken down, put in a borrowed tomb, wrapped and prepared laid there, left in the tomb. The tomb was then sealed, marked, and guards were placed. But just as he said, after three days, he would rise again. This Jesus, whom the Lord made, whom it says, this Jesus, whom that God has made, this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. So he's no longer dead. He's living. It's not just a manger scene. He's a living Christ. And all of those that believe in him shall have eternal life. Those that resist and reject will be lost forever. God has made a way possible that you could be saved. He's made a way possible that you might know him. You might know God. He's made it possible that you might trust in him, follow him, believe him. He's made it possible that this Jesus is the one that we are to believe. You know, um, there's... There's many alternatives. People go other directions and they have different kinds of beliefs and all of that. But we need to be reminded, just as the house of Israel had to be reminded, it's this Jesus whom you crucified has been made Lord in Christ. And he's the Messiah. He's the promised one. He's the one fulfilling prophecy. He's the one that, that has come that we might be saved. He's our Savior. Friend, listen, I hope today that you know this Jesus, not another one. Don't accept any other Jesus. There's many false Christ. There's many false leaders, many false uh, beliefs. Do not miss this Jesus, the Son of God, whom the Jews crucified, but he we know. He actually died on the cross because of our sins. 
he bore our sins in his own body on that tree that we might be able to live for him. My friend, listen, it's this Jesus that you have to believe in. It's this Jesus here at this Christmas. I hope you've believed. Put your faith and hope and trust in him. Let's close in prayer. Father, I just thank you for the apostolic message focused in on the Lord Jesus Christ, not only about um, uh, the birth that we know or the miracles, but we know the, the death and resurrection of Jesus. The blood was given for our sins. Our sins required his blood. Thank you, Father, for this Jesus becoming our sacrifice, the ransom for all. In Jesus' precious name, amen.